Hello, this is Telecom TV. I'm Martin Warwick. We are at Telecom TV's very first standalone event, which is the DSP Leaders Forum being held here in Windsor. I'm talking with Neil McRae, Chief Architect of BT. Hi, Martin. Hi, Neil. Good to see you again. Automation, Neil. Let's look at that in a bit more detail. Why is it so important now? Um, I think it's important now predominantly because of the, the, the scale of complexity that we face. Um, I remember building networks, um, you know, in the 90s and, and early early 2000s where it was possible for you to have a picture of the network in your head. You know, I almost could read the config out of my head. Um, now the config, you know, and the config was, you know, a couple of pages of A4. Now it's almost, uh, you know, Encyclopedia Britannic, it's so big. And your ability to digest that and compute it in your head, just, it's, you just can't do it. And what we find is, is that even the simplest of problems can take us hours to figure out where they are and then hours to fix them. I believe that's no longer acceptable. In fact, I've believed that for some time, um, that we could automate a lot more in the network. And we, we started this journey, you know, a good th three or four years ago of, okay, how might you automate things? So in my mind, the automation of creating new services, of managing failure, um, Again, I, I believe five years from now, it'll be one of those things that's just taken as read, that you have to have this. And, and um, as the demand for the network grows, um, you know, I, I envisage, it, particularly with 5G, hospitals having many more services that leverage the 5G network. And if you're wheeling a, you know, a, a patient into an operation, um, you know, what you can't have is someone doing a, you know, a bit quick change on the network. Well, we'll be back in 10 minutes, right? That just won't work. So I genuinely believe if, you know, m my passion is to see everyone use the network for, for good. And if, and if we want to enable that in, in situations like hospitals or in, in other, you know, life, life and death situations, we've got to think that we run a life and death sort of platform and think like that way. And actually we've, we've moved that way dramatically in, in, in the last few years because more and more TVs on, online and you know, whilst it's not life and death, let me tell you, if, if someone doesn't see the end of their Liverpool-Chelsea match because we have a problem, we know about it, right? Oh, we, we, have, we have many customers that get very frustrated about it. So our, our ability to manage change um, has really stepped up and, and I think the reliability that we see in the network today across, you know, not just BT, but all service providers really, um, has, has, has dramatically improved. I think the second thing I'll add to that is security. Um, you know, it used to be a time where you build, build a network and then you put security around it. Yeah. Those days just aren't there anymore. You have to embed security at the heart of everything. And the only way of doing that is to automate it. You build policies, you build the automation. You know, the days of what I call keyboard jockeys logging in and typing away, sadly, they're coming to an end. I mean, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a protege of that era in many respects, but it's just not the future for us. And, 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 and the services that our customers demand from us and the reliability from, you know, and I, I mentioned life and death, but just in day to day life. We just have to automate things. It's just, it's, it's just what we have to do. Good, thank you. What about open source? Let's talk briefly about that. Um, it's been important to many service provider transformations leading up to 5G. How much of the BT network is leveraging open source? Um, I mean, we've used open source for longer than I've worked at BT, so well over 10 years. And, and, men, and, and some of the applications in the network um, you know, authentication and, and name service, we've had open source there for years. I think, and, and more and more of the vendor deployments that we that we use leverage open source. Um, I've been using open source since the 80s, believe it or not. Um, but, you know, bef before Linux was version one, uh, I've written device drivers, um, I've worked as part of a, an open source team, and I've seen it evolve from what was a kind of a bunch of strange people to kind of mainstream. And although some of us are still strange, I hasten, hasten to add. Um, and and it, for me, it's glorious to see that. But, but, I, but I think it's come with some challenges. Um, the challenges of which direction is right. Um, the challenges of who owns the IPR and who really is deciding what is 
in open source and what isn't. And, and we found some of that to be frustrating, frankly. Um, but... Um, Sorry, Neil, you mean sort of in a too many cooks sort of way? In some cases, yes. Yeah. Uh, but also in the, in the case of, you know, we've seen some challenges around the quality of things where people are rushing to get stuff out there. Mm. And, you know, oh, we've developed that feature, let's focus on the next feature without really being clear about what was the performance of that feature? How well is it working? What did the users think of it? And I, and I think there's two things that, that really face open source as a whole, actually. One is, is that greater engagement with the users of open source? And I think that has dramatically improved, there's no question about it, but I challenge those in, in, involved in open source to, to always think of the, you know, the customer and the user um, that's using the platform or, or the capability. Um, and then I think the second thing is, is the scale of it. Um, as it grows, I mean, part of the reason we, we looked to open source was because the scale of other IT got beyond us, frankly. Um, you know, we, I run a huge uh, IT platform at BT. We spend a lot of money on it. Um, and, you know, open source is one way out of that for us, not the only way. But, but I, I think I'd go back to, you know, what, what I've said many times on this before, which is, Open source is great, and we, we use it, and you know we have no religious belief about it or not. Much in the same way, actually, if someone brings me a thing that does what I need it to do for my customer, and I can make money out of it, whether it's open source or not, actually, I'm less worried about that. Um, I want to I want to delight my customers, um, and I want to continue to delight my customers. So having something that works works well, be it open or not, is 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 crucial then being able to make money out of it, making a return so I can invest in the next thing that delights my customers is also important. So we're very much of the opinion that, you know, let's take the best of breed and we'll work with the best of breed, be it open source or not. Neil McRae, as usual, absolutely fascinating. Great to see you. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Martin. It's been a pleasure to be here.